All right, what is going on guys? So over the past few days, I've been working on getting up to speed with Django. Django is a backend Python framework that I've been wanting to learn for a while, but I really just haven't had time. So I've been working on it, done a bunch of stuff with it, and I kind of wanted to just go over my sort of, I wanted to go over my sort of first impressions of the framework, how I feel about it, uh, give you a little breakdown of some of the key features I found so far, sort of talk you through the stack I feel like I could end up using with this, and some of the pros and cons that have very quickly emerged from this. So let's get started with the little demo app I did. So I've just been reading their documentation, I've been going through using their docs and their tutorial, all of it's very well made, all of it's very easy to follow, just been doing that and playing with it as I go. So. First thing I have up here is they just uh, had us build this like basic poll app type thing. So you can go in here and you can go into a question and then you can vote on which one. It'll show you the end result. All this is being saved into a database. So let's sort of look at how this is being done. So you do all your server side data fetching logic or your post request logic or whatever. You do that within the views and then the model is what actually connects to the database. The templates are how we actually display stuff out to the end user. You can just add stuff into the HTML. So like on this index.html, I'm pulling in all the questions from the database. So I load all of those in the view and then when we load this template we can inject that in as question list and then we can use the template syntax in here to actually print those out. If you are familiar with Node or if you're familiar with any of the JS frameworks like Next.js or Nux.js or any of these, this is where I come from. So I do not have a background in these sort of traditional MVC frameworks. I have a background in Node frameworks, stuff like Next.js in particular. So this is fairly different from how those work. and. One of the things you're going to notice is that this is just static HTML. So I don't have JS or a JS framework in here or any interactivity. So I'm just pulling this stuff in from the server and then I'm printing it out using the templating syntax and then going from there. So the way this will actually work is here. The um, Django provides tons and tons of really useful stuff. This is built with the idea that you sort of, they solve a lot of the generic problems that you're going to run into for you. So here we can import from the Django views, import generic. And basically what generic is, is it's just a collection of basic use cases that you're often going to have. In this case, it's we need to bring in a list of something. So imagine you had like a product page, you need to bring in a list of products. So we can go ahead and define that our template name is going to be polls index.html, which if we look at this, that's the correct template. Then we have the context object name, which is questionless, as you saw back in the index.html. That's how we're actually printing this stuff out. Then finally, down here, we are defining this function of get query set and then passing in the self object. Effectively, all this is going to do is this is just going Going to do a database query to get the most recent five questions or the five most recent questions. So if we look at the way the database itself works, this is where the models come in. So I have this thing right here, which is question and question is coming from my models directory. If we go into my models, you can see in here, I have a question. So I have all these extra methods on it. So the underscore underscore ST underscore underscore str this will define how if we just did question dot two string this is what would be printed out and then here we have an extra utility method was pub published recently this is something that i can use on this class for you know you can define whatever you want in here make as many of these as you want just little helper methods for yourself and then the important ones are these fields down here which we are using the models package from django to define these as a char a char field with a max length of 255 and then a date time field and then giving it a name of date published so that it'll show up as date published in the admin page, which I'll show you in a moment. So effectively what this is doing is this is creating the schema for our database. It's defining what all of our tables and models effectively are going to look like. And then with Django, we can use built-in migrate. Django has support for built-in migrations. So all we have to do is prepare those migrations using the the Django CLI that will create this migrations directory and then create each one of these. So here I have my 001, my initial migration. So you can see in here, it's creating these models. It's defining how all of these work. And then we can just run another command to actually put those into the database. So we prepare the migrations, put them in the database and it handles all of it for us. So one of the things that you can kind of see as we're looking at all of this stuff is it's very batteries included. It kind of just solves all the common use cases you would have for you. I come from the JS framework world of like Next.js or whatever, where you kind of have to figure out how you want to solve all this stuff yourself. They don't provide you with an ORM. They don't provide you with authentication. They don't provide you with any of this stuff. You have to actually go in and do that yourself which is fine and it works, but it this makes it a lot easier. Although it does give it a bit, it makes the learning curve a bit more steep because there's more stuff you have to figure out and mess with, but I do kind of like how this works. So 
like I said there, we have the models, we have all of our models in here, then we can use within our views, we can get op question dot objects dot order by this isn't a tutorial or anything like that. So point is we can just fetch stuff out of the database using these models. And then here, this index view is going to get called every time we go to the index.html page. And the reason for this is on our URLs page, we are set or in our URLs file, we're saying that the path of root is going to go to views.index view as view. So we're just calling this we're calling that we're calling that class that we defined and then we're going to say okay this is the view and then the name is going to be index because it's our index page and then it'll actually render all that out so we go back to our browser and we go to the root of polls we'll get all this so these are all being fetched from the database pretty simple then another cool thing we have is django has a built-in admin page which is really cool it's kind of not something i've seen in other frameworks some might have it i just don't know about it but if we look in here, this is a built-in admin page that they give you to actually manage your database. So if we look at this in here, I have under my poll section, I have questions. So here you can see a list of everything in my database. And then if I wanna add something to this, I can just do add question and then we'll just do test video. And then I'll just put in today and now, we hit save and then we go back to our list of questions. It's in here. If we go back to this page and refresh, now we're pulling this out of the database. So I didn't have to do anything to set all this up. I just had to run the admin page, do a couple lines of config. You can find those in the docs very easy. And then it just works. So this is a really nice administrative sort of thing it gives you. Yeah, I wouldn't want to use this as like a CMS or something, but it's sort of just something that you can use as an admin to help manage your site and control everything. Although I would still want to build out a lot of the CRUD logic on the front end. And the way you can do that CRUD logic is I did an example here. So let's go to first question. And then here we have a, we have a relation to actual like options or whatever. So I have these two random options. And if I go ahead and I click on one of these and then hit vote, this is going to call a post request to the database and add a vote here. So that's going to simulate the sort of writing. If we go to how that works within the code, we have this vote method. So this is what's going to be handled on a post request. So this is what's going to be handled. So um, they don't really define like if a root is a post or a get request or whatever, but whenever we submit the form, uh, for example, on the details page here, we have this form down here where form action, we're passing in the template syntax. You can look this up if you want to get more details, but effectively we're just saying use the URL of the polls vote uh, page and then pass in the question ID as an argument and then make the method of post. So that means that we're going to be sending a post request here, which means that we're going to be sending data with it. And then within our views.py, we can go ahead and pull choice out of our post request. So we can say request.post get choice out. So its name inside of here is choice. So that means that it's going to be sent over HTTP via the, it's going to be sent via the post request uh, with a name key of choice. Then we pull the value out and then we're doing this in a try catch where we are, um, what we're doing is we're taking the selected choice out and then we're going to try and get that. So then what's happening up here is we have the question here. So we're getting this question and we're doing get object or 404. And effectively that's yet another sort of helper generic thing that they provide you where if you imagine on your server, a very common use case is going to be, okay, I need to, I go to a page and I, um, I go to like slash post slash ID and I need to pass that ID in and then pull down that post and get it. So a very common thing is you have to try and get that from the database. If it's not there, send back a 404, a lot of boilerplate, and they just have a method that'll do that logic for you. So I'm going to get this object or 404. The first argument that I pass in is going to be the actual model class, which is going to be a question. And then the second is going to be an argument of the primary key. And that's going to be question ID. So I'm going to pass in the question ID as a primary key. It'll get the question, assuming that question exists, which in the case that I just showed you, it did. We'll run this try catch. As I said, we're going to pull this choice off of the post request. I'm getting this choice from the set of available options on this question. I'm pulling it off then getting the selected choice. And then I'm going down in here and I'm actually messing with it. So what's kind of different about how the Django ORM works with something like Prisma or whatever is you get these objects or whatever. So this is like a class instance. So this selected choice is a class instance of the choice object, which or sorry, the choice class, which I've defined in here. So it has all these uh, values on it. So the this guy has votes on it. So when I'm pulling this out, so when I'm pulling this out here, it's gonna have however many votes it has on that object. So I can do selected choice dot votes and then increment it by one. And then I can call selected choice dot save. It'll update that entry. And then I go ahead and I um, return a redirect to the results page and then pass in the question ID as an argument. You have to make sure that you return a redirect whenever you submit a post request so that if the user goes back a page, they won't redirect resubmit the form again. Just want to make sure that you do that. And then that will complete the logic that you saw up here. So this is pretty great. And I like how this works. It's very similar to Remix. Uh, Remix kind of does this. And this is the traditional way the web worked where you would be sending the 
um, sending these get requests and post requests over the network, handling everything on your server. And then when you need to send data down, you use something like a templating language here. It's really more recently that we've started using stuff like single page apps that, which is like React or Vue or Svelte or any of these different things where we use JS to fetch that data down and then do a bunch of stuff on it here. So this is pretty great. But then the issue that sort of pull comes up is then how do you make all this stuff reactive? How do you add more advanced features? And then the traditional answer, the traditional answer was always jQuery. Personally, I'm not a fan of jQuery. I don't like it and it's kind of outdated. No one really uses it anymore. So what you can use instead is something that I think is kind of slick and I'm actually going to try this. I want to build out a more detailed app with this. I'm not certain about this yet, but it seems very, it seems like a very good idea. So within this details page, I have this thing up here where I'm creating a script of module and I'm importing petite view. So Vue has a sort of sub package called Petite Vue, which is a tiny, like a, I think it's a couple kilobytes, um, couple kilobytes in size that gives you all of the Vue sort of basic things of Vue that you can just import into your script and then drop it into your HTML. So these are HTML pages and I can work with this as normal HTML. So I don't have a virtual DOM. I don't have a single page app. I don't have whatever. So I get all my SEO benefits of I can add the title and meta tags for each page individually. And then I can add my reactivity by importing this little petite view module. So to demo this, I went ahead and I created a little store, set a count to zero, and then an increment method that will increment the count. Then finally, I create the app um, down here. Yeah, I create the app and the only really fancy thing I'm doing is I'm setting this delimiters variable. So the templating syntax of Python or the templating syntax of Django uses the same delimiters as uh, Vue. Vue uses the two curly braces. Um, I have to switch this over to two square brackets so that the two don't overlap with each other. So what I'm doing here is I'm just saying, okay, my header is going to come from the templating, but this h4, this store.count, this is going to come from petite view. So we go back here and we look at this page. Uh, let's go to this. I have my counter right here initialized to zero. And if I increment this, it's working because I have the full functionality of view built in here. And if I wanted to, I could do post requests in here. I could make requests, manage state, whatever I want to do. So this is pretty nice. And my first impressions are, I really like how this works, but I need to do more research into it. And the sort of initial pros and cons that I'm finding is the first thing is gonna be, there is no real type safety in this because there's no TypeScript files in here. The, there is server side type safety, but on the client side, none of this is typed and this script in here, this is raw JS. I don't have TypeScript in here. Um, this is of type any, this is of type any, this is a, this is a number cause you know, I can type it there, but it's not TypeScript. It's not the same stuff that you're going to get if you use a regular view app and did everything in there. And then we don't have a lot of the ease of use things from these single page apps. But we also gain a lot from the from doing everything with this separate Python server. And one of those big things is that there is no virtual DOM. This is something that 99% of people probably don't actually care about because if you're just doing basic stuff, the virtual DOM is nice and React is nice and it makes it easy and quick and good. But I, when we've gone ahead and built Insider Viz and done all of our different projects, we have had a huge issue with the virtual DOM and it being very stupid and it not liking the way we're trying to do things because we're trying to do everything with custom D3 objects and DOM manipulation and all this stuff. So this would solve that problem and just give us raw HTML. So you get much more control over your site this way and you get much more control over your front end. Although that comes with the cost of it's more difficult to manage. And this is a much higher level thing to where most people don't need to worry about it. Most people don't care about whether or not they can use custom D3 logic to manipulate the DOM. They just need to be able to read and write state and all that stuff at a use effect and React does great for that. So this is a very niche thing, but I think for my use cases, this could be really nice. Um, the actual development flow of this, I can see why people like it. It's very quick and easy. And once you sort of get used to it, I can definitely see this being a very fast workflow. Um, the actual framework itself is clearly very well thought out, very well tested. It does a lot of the like basic stuff that you kind of have to re-implement over and over again in JavaScript or whatever, because or import some random package for, and then cobble it together yourself. That's all just handled for you here. They have built-in authentication. Although personally, I would go ahead and use something like Auth0 because I like using an external auth provider, but they do that for you. They have the really nice admin page. Their ORM and migration system is fantastic. And they also provide a nice little CLI utility so that if in like a production environment or whatever, you can spin up that CLI and do your migrations and stuff as one-off jobs in there. Really great stuff. So yeah, 
um, that's sort of a quick breakdown of my first impressions on this and how I feel about that's sort of breakdown of my first impressions, how I feel about each of these pieces. I think I want to go ahead and try and build a full app out, which is going to have, it's going to use Django for its backend and templating and stuff. And then I'm going to use probably a Postgres database. I'm going to use Auth0. And then I'm going to do for my front end, I'm going to use um, this petite view to add interactivity where I need it. Everywhere else I'll use templating and then see if we can use, see if this makes our lives easier with like the D3 stuff and SVGs and animation because again, I know I have a pretty unique use case here, but my friends are very, very good at doing these crazy, uh, doing tons of crazy stuff with SVGs and they have hated React for a long time. So this could be a good solution, going to give it more time, but yeah.